Ik ga, ik ga vandaag iets... Oh. <laughs> you know what? What? Hallo allemaal, vandaag gaan we iets een beetje anders doen. Ik ga jullie vertellen over hoe ik heb zo snel een tweede taal geleerd en al mijn tips en trucs aan jullie geven. Nou, misschien hoor je het al of weet je het al, maar ik kan wel Nederlands spreken en ik vind dat ik heb een best wel korte tijd een tweede taal geleerd. Dus ik ga eerst jullie vertellen waarom ik heb voor Nederlands gekozen. Oké, okay, so the real reason why I wanted to learn Dutch was because my partner is actually from the Netherlands. We were just finishing up our cycle tour around Southeast Asia and if you haven't seen any of the videos you can click on the link above here and it will take you back to what we were doing before this. I had made the decision to learn Dutch and I started with a clear idea of how I wanted to tackle the language and I really wanted to make an effort so that I could communicate with my partner and his family and especially his grandparents because they don't actually speak English and I wanted to make the most of us moving to a new country, being able to take as much of the culture and experience in as I possibly could. So that was my motivation for learning a new language. And I think if you guys are deciding to learn a new language, you need to ask yourself, what is my motivation? And will that motivation keep me motivated through the entire process? Because it is a really long process. So now I want to tell you guys the actual tools that I used and resources that I used and how I set up my language learning process and how I tackled the language. So first thing was that I used a program called Anki. Now Anki is a spaced repetition program so you can create your own flashcards. Spaced repetition essentially means that the program learns over time which words you have the most difficulty with and which words you can actually remember easily. Once you've clicked on whether a word was hard to recall or easy to recall, the program learns which words to show you more frequently. Anki is available on a smartphone for free, your computer for free, but I believe if you have an Apple or an iPad, you do need to pay a small price for the app. How I actually made my flashcards was that I used a website called Fluent Forever. They actually produce their own decks. So I actually started with the English to Dutch pronunciation trainer and that gave me sort of a base level of how the language is pronounced and the spelling combinations within that language. I then purchased their awesome word list and then I turned each of those individual words into a flashcard. My method was to cut English out of the process. I used a image and then I used the Dutch word and I chose to do it this way in order to teach my brain to associate the image with the new Dutch word instead of translating the image to an English word and then again to a Dutch word from there. So I wanted to streamline that process and cut English out as the middleman. I will link below the Fluent Forever website. I cannot recommend them highly enough. If I tackle any new language, I always go on and buy their pronunciation trainers. They are super, super reasonably priced. I've obviously bought the awesome word list as a one-off purchase in English and then I've made my own flashcards three different flashcard sets from that awesome word list and it is my absolute go-to for the very very beginning of a language the other thing that I did very very early on was listening to podcasts and I did this in order to familiarize myself with the rhythm and the tone of the language I obviously couldn't understand anything at this point and I used to just listen to random things I didn't actually know what I was listening to I do still have the playlist on my phone now towards the end of our cycle trip I had finished making my deck of cards and I had been using them on the Anki app on my telephone and I recorded my very first conversation that I had with Yessa and I'm gonna put that in here so that you guys can have a listen to how terrible I was at the start Mobile. Mm -hmm. And then, 
jij wakker worden. En vandaag de weer. So as you guys can hear, my words are really spaced far apart because I'm thinking about what I'm trying to say. And yes, it was really good in trying to reword the question. And if you can find a language partner, I highly, highly recommend being able to do this. Italki is a fantastic resource in linking up with people who speak the language if you don't have the opportunity to live there or your boyfriend doesn't speak the language that you want to speak. The other thing I used to do very, very early on and before we even arrived in the Netherlands was watch cooking videos on YouTube. And I found this really good because with cooking videos, they actually explain what they're doing while they're doing it. So if someone's stirring a pot, they're going to name the ingredients that they're using, but they're also going to use words like I'm stirring, blah, blah, blah. And I found this sentence structure really easy to understand. It also boosted my vocabulary because I was able to associate an image with the Dutch word that was happening. So what I would do was watch the cooking tutorial. I would use the auto-generated Dutch subtitles to watch the video and then see if I could link any of my new vocabulary words that I had been learning on my Anki decks to the images that I was seeing as well. And slowly, very slowly, making connections between words and actions. Another show I used to watch very, very early on was Penosa. This is pretty well known in the Netherlands and obviously coming from an English speaking country, I had never heard of it, but it's super, super popular and it's just like a TV crime series. Me and Yasu used to watch an episode of Penosa, maybe a couple a week and then any of the questions or any sentences that I didn't understand I was able to ask straight away what are they saying or what do they mean and after you've watched a few episodes you actually start to pick up a bit of the storyline just from seeing what's happening and you understand a little bit about the characters and I guess that's when you really start to link the language with what they're doing. So when we were in China, I decided to start writing a bit of a day journal and notes over what I had done that day, what I had seen that day, but I would do it in Dutch. So I would write things like, today I ate this or I ate that and we went for a hike here and we went for a walk there and we cycled here and it was able to extend my vocabulary, but it was also a good way to talk about myself and things that interested me and find what words I didn't know yet. So as my translator, I actually use Google Translate, which isn't always super, super reliable. And if I ever didn't really trust the word that it was giving me, I would just ask Yesa to double check it for me. If you have a tutor or a friend who speaks your target language, you can also send them through these questions. I used to ask um, friends, when we first, first moved to the Netherlands to actually record themselves saying certain sentences that I had trouble with. And then I would listen to them over and over and over again when I was trying to improve my accent and was trying to improve the way that people heard how I was speaking. Another good way to pick up bits of the culture of your target language is actually listening to the music that people that speak your language listen to. And I know a lot of people, like to go in and translate the lyrics so that they get more out of the song, but I actually just use this as almost a more passive way of learning the language and just appreciating the music for how it sounds. And music listening for me is sort of like my fun, more relaxed part of learning a language. Now that you've got a couple of words floating around in your head, the next thing to do would be to tackle grammar. And I know this intimidates a lot of people, but grammar is sort of like the glue that links all the words together. And the way I learned grammar was I actually read a blog post on a website, Universe of Memory, and I'll link it down below, but he breaks down grammar in how you should tackle it, and then essentially gives you a memorizing process to help segment your grammar practice into small blocks so that you're able to digest it a little bit better. So what I would do was choose a grammar structure that I was learning and then I would write 20 sentences every single day until I felt comfortable with that grammar structure. So I would write things like, I am running and then how I would say that in Dutch and then I would write, I am going, I am walking and using that same grammar structure but replacing the action of the word with vocabulary that I'd already learned until 
it was basically drummed into my head. Now, after I had been using these different techniques for a little while and was getting more and more comfortable with the language and I was using it on a daily basis, I then recorded myself again. So these two videos were a month apart and I'll let you guys listen to this one just to see how much I had improved in about a four week period. Echt mooi en, en zoveel mensen vragen me waarom Nederlands leren. En ik denk, wat well, je kunt niet alleen één taal leren voor altijd. Voor even? Voor even? Voor altijd. Voor altijd. Ja. Je kunt een andere taal leren ook. Het is een filmpje gekeken. Gekeken? Het raar hè? Het is de beste Nederlandse film ooit. Nee, ik denk dat het goed was, maar oh. het was een beetje raar. Oh. Het is niet een normale film. Oké. Okay. Denk je of niet? Wel een beetje een rare film, ja. ja. Ja, come on, but I artistic, yeah, artistic. Artistic. That is the, yeah. So it can feel overwhelming about all the things that you can do to tackle a language. And I want to talk about how I would plan sort of a lesson that I would be doing in Dutch. So essentially there are four main parts of language. So there's speaking, listening, writing, and reading. And then obviously your two inputs are listening and reading. And then the two outputs of language are writing and speaking. When you're setting up a lesson and when you're learning a language, you really want to make sure that you are spreading yourself over the four different parts of language so that you're not really, really good at reading, but then you're terrible, terrible at listening. I have obviously in the beginning struggled with speaking and I think a lot of people struggle starting speaking a language at first. And that's why I recommend highly to record your conversations, even if you're just talking to a camera, just so that you can hear yourself, hear how you sound, and to see the progress that you're making because you will no doubt be making progress no matter how small it is. So as an example lesson, I might read a book for a period of time and underline the words that I don't know from the context of the book. And then later I would go in and try and make sentences with the words. And then I would use them in a conversation with my partner, Yessa. Maybe at the end of the day, I might listen to a song or a podcast and again, try and focus on the words that I was unfamiliar with and maybe write them down. I used to listen to some spoken word poetry in Dutch and then try and do a handwritten transcription. So I was listening to it over and over and over again. And then I would get Yessa to read it to make sure that I had heard the words correctly. Obviously planning out your lessons that you wanna do when you're in your target language, you wanna stay consistent. I know that there's a lot of apps that claim that you could do five minutes a day and you'll be fluent in a new language. I really don't believe this. I worked really, really hard to be able to speak the language that I wanted to speak in such a short period of time. I also had the advantage of living in the country, but I truly believe that you can implement these lessons and these techniques into any language that you wanna learn right from your own home. If you commit to studying anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes a day and making sure that your lessons include the four different parts of language, the two inputs and the two outputs, you are guaranteed to see results. There's no way that you couldn't improve your language skills. And if you are ever feeling disheartened, record yourself speaking, record yourself writing, look back on old journals that you may have written and look for your progress because you will no doubt have made some. As with any language, it always feels like a never ending challenge. I am still learning and I still make heaps of mistakes all the time. And especially now that we're in Australia, I feel like my Dutch has gotten so, so bad. And yes, is always on my back about it. But I know that as soon as we get back, I'll be able to pick it up where we left off and it will be fine. Everything that I've mentioned in this video, I will link down below. I hope that you guys have learned something from this video. So if you have, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.